it is time for another professional match of StarCraft 2, and what I got for you today is a Terran vs Zerg played on Vani Research Station. Spawning on the top end of the map, playing for Team Euronic, sponsored by Red Bull, he is known as Nurcio. And he's gonna be playing with the red Zerg pieces today. And his opponent, playing with the blue Terran pieces, playing for Team Liquid, he is known as Euthermal. A fellow Dutchman, I'm a big fan of watching this guy play, not just because he's actually a really, really fun player to watch, he usually plays a very aggressive, like, bio-focused style, but on top of that, he's actually the best Dutch player in the world, uh, which definitely, uh, you know, means that I'm gonna keep an eye out on him as long as he keeps on playing, because this guy definitely has been very successful as well. Uh, he managed to win an IEM last year, his total earnings are just over $73,000 in prize money so far, and he's currently got a 62% win rate in the Terran vs Zerg matchup. His opponent on the other end doesn't really need an introduction whatsoever, I mean I've featured him a couple of times on this channel before, but he's also extremely successful in what he does. He's won uh, two dream hacks, he's won a home story cup, and he's currently got a 67.5% win rate in the Zerg vs Terran matchup, but on top of that he's won many many tournaments uh, over the course of StarCraft 2. He's been along, or he's been, uh, he's basically been playing StarCraft 2 ever since it initially came out. I remember watching him way back in the day, and his total earnings are just over $250,000 in prize money alone right now at this point in time. But both of these players definitely still at the top of their games. I don't think uh, they're gonna go anywhere anytime soon, because they have been very successful throughout 2016, and 2017 is looking very, very cool as well. And I was just gonna say, Nurtio opened up with an early Gas Geyser there, and he did follow it up with a spawning pool, but I didn't expect him to go for this super quick Roach Warren here instead. That is extremely interesting, because while he does favor the spawning pool first every now and then, he is most definitely looking to get aggressive, or he may be anticipating Euthermal to go for some sort of early game Reaper Harass. Now, of course, we do see that single Reaper move across the map, but it looks like Euthermal is not going for that triple Rex Reaper play, and instead decides to go for a quick second command center in his in-base natural, which is conveniently tucked into the main base, not very easy to reach right here, and pretty much impossible to reach with ground units, uh, at the very least in the earlier stages of the game. And he's gonna be able to do a little bit of scouting. Now, three roaches are already on the way. Of course, this will get scouted right here by Euthermal very, very shortly. He does see the roach one right there. Nice little bit of uh, spore crawler building there by Nurture, keeping that one drone alive as well. But this has now been spotted, and he knows very well what is going on. So, how exactly is Euthermal gonna respond? Looks like he's not really building a whole lot just yet. He does get that second barracks and the factory here as well. And while he did see the Roach Warren, it looks like he's not all too worried by that, at the very least for right now. Just casually repairing here at home, trying to build as many uh, units as possible, but always really adding on here defensively is that single bunker, and I wonder if that's not maybe a little bit too greedy. In the meantime, the Reaper is still on the other end of the map, it does indeed snipe a drone there at the very last second, but it is a little stuck in the main base right now, and it will need to scoot on out of there if it wants to try and stay alive. Of course, though, this uh, bunker is perfectly timed. This is one of the hallmarks of pro gamers, not rushing that out. I would have probably panicked and immediately thrown up that bunker, but instead, Euthermal taking his time and not really taking any unnecessary risks. But I like this a lot. Look at that. So Nurture is skipping out the metabolic boost upgrade to certain speed here in the earlier stages of the game and decides to spend the gas to get some additional uh, Ravagers here instead. And this is super good, as with the high ground vision here of the Overlord, he can shoot down all of these buildings with relative ease and that bunker seems to be a little bit caught out of position here and all of these Ravagers are already doing a lot of damage. And actually, this Ravager rush may very well be paying off beautifully so far because he's going to be able to rain those corrosive bios here for as long as he possibly want to and this means that the reactor will not be helping with the double production here whatsoever. Reaper did manage to get a second kill there in the meantime on the other end of the map, but of course Nurcio is droning up. He's really not taking any unnecessary risks. And actually, this is pretty cool as well because he's forcing the repair right now on that bunker, which actually costs quite a lot of resources. And actually, it may very well end up falling if he's not careful here. Euthermo is forced to leave a lot of units off of the line there, making sure though that he micros them back as soon as those corrosive bios were threatening to land. But this is just such a pain here for Euthermal to deal with. And in the meantime, like I said, you know, the drones are still going down here for Nurtio, but 
I don't know if enough damage here really was dealt. Of course, if Euthermal was planning to go for any kind of aggression here in the earlier stages of the game, the Ravages definitely would have shut that down uh, just straight up. But in the meantime, he's, he's still got a very solid defense. And it looks like he knows that he's healthed at this point. And he's going to simply fly across the map here, threatening any overlords that may very well be caught off guard. But with that, uh, the Zerking speed here, Zerk may very well be in some trouble. Of course, Euthermal not done with the production just yet. He's got the double Metavex out and Stimpak is just finished up. So that does mean that these Marines can definitely deal a significant amount of damage while the Ravagers are still trying to make their way back home. And indeed, all of the uh, drones will be forced off of the line right now. And while the Queens are indeed target firing down uh, on these Metavex with some proper micro, this will be able to do a huge amount of damage. Very, very nicely done. Gets the double Queen here, gets five drones as well. And getting a couple of these Ravagers, definitely ends up paying for itself as well. So as far as the earlier stages of this game goes, I'm definitely gonna give the upper hand right here to your thermal, just because he's managed to delay the creep spread and the third base and basically everything just because of the opener that his opponent decided to go for. And with the beautiful follow-up here, he definitely evened up the score as the larva production at this point, because of all the dead queens, will be very, very difficult to continue. And it definitely is going to slow down the Zerg player here for the time being. In the meantime, double engineering bay here going down for you thermal, making sure that he gets those upgrades here very, very shortly. They are extremely important, but of course, these sort of positions are super difficult for a Zerg player to engage into. I mean, one Roach does indeed end up falling there, but those Zerglings would not be able to surround very easily whatsoever. In the meantime, on the other end of the map, uh, still a bunch of pressure here going down as well by the Terran player, nearly sniping that Queen. It's only got a little bit of HP left over, but it will be able to get rid of the Metavex here once and for all, at the very least for the time being. No third base follow-up just yet here for you, Thermal. That is something that we do have to keep in mind. He is getting the plus one, plus one upgrades, but it looks like he is doing you Thermal things. And what I mean with that is that he is going to continuously, and he's probably going to do this for the remainder of the game, because he is very well known for this. He is some of the best drop harass in the world. He's going to continuously drop and threaten drops throughout this game. I mean, he's got Metavex all over the map. He's not going to send those home, using his control groups effectively and making sure that he's mostly just being a pain to his opponent. And there, indeed, we do see that follow-up here with the command center. Going for the Liberator play now as well. We can, of course, harass mineral lines with that very, very nicely. But once again, dropping down with those Marines. And this actually makes it pretty tricky for me as well, because I'm going to have to try and observe and keep track of all of the drops. And in many instances, uh, the pro gamers are actually much faster than the observers as they are trying to, you know, of course, do multiple sets of harassment at different moments in the game. Now, of course, Nurtio is fully aware of the playstyle of his opponent. I mean, Euthermo has been doing this for years, and he's going to try and just simply set up a bunch of static defense, and I like this quite a lot. No uh, spores right here in the main, or in the natural just yet, but he does have one in the main, as well as one in the third. This just makes the dropping a little bit more difficult, but I gotta say, so far, the defense for Nurtio has been solid as well. He's been spreading his units very, very nicely, making sure that he's got different clumps of units in different places, and he does indeed have a spore there as well. Maybe he already had that previously as well, but regardless, now you can see he's defending all the different areas on the map by just simply not, you know, putting all of his units on the same control group. Now, of course, right as I say that, he does start moving out across the map here. A couple of these creep tumors are forced to get cancelled or may have very well been sniped, but it looks like we may very well be in here for a macro game. Um, you thermal making sure that he gets as many units here as possible. Uh, still double producing those liberators and just simply rallying them straight across the map to try and see how much damage he can do. But he's just going to continuously drop here to try and eventually uh, get rid of as many of those drones as possible, at which point he manages to build up a significant economy lead. But I gotta be honest, Nurtio, not really, like, he did lose a bunch of workers in this game, he actually ended up losing 13. But at this point, like, this is also playing right into the hands of Nurtio. Once it gets to this moment in the game, once we get past that earlier stage and we jump into the mid to like the latest stages of it, Nurtio is extremely good. Like his defensive play, he's not gonna move out. I highly doubt he's gonna move out. He's known to be just simply defending against his aggression, slowly but surely build up a massive army 
and eventually he's going to be able to move across the map with an army that is going to be near, um, like near impossible for Terran players to hold just because of his really superb macro in that regard. So we will see if that is what is going to be happening in this game. But knowing both of these players' play styles, I would not be surprised if that is the case. So the Liberators are moving everywhere across the map. Dropship are threatening everywhere. And once again, a dropship is hitting in the main. But look at this. He's immediately on top of that. Beautiful play here by Nerd Show, not really taking any unnecessary risks. But this fort base is under a little bit of pressure. The one queen does indeed end up falling, but the units of Nurtio are there in time to intercept this aggression as well. A couple of these liberators, of course, will be stopped here with relative ease just by simply having those spores in position. There are also infestors out now too, which definitely can be paying off. And here we go. He's going to start shooting at those units. There are not enough units here, actually, to shoot down those liberators just yet. Those corrosive bios do land, but they don't do enough. And once more, a lot of damage is being dealt here by... Oh my god, by Euthermal, but... One of the dropships has to pay for its life by that lethal culmination of the fungal growth and the corrosive biles. However, Euthermal not done just yet. He's gonna keep on dropping here at the newly acquired fort base location of Nurtio. Just simply trying to use the map terrain to his advantage. And he's just gonna split off once again and more and more workers end up falling. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at that. 23 workers already end up falling in this game so far, and that is definitely nothing to write home about. Does need to be very careful. Ooh, a full medevac, 10 supply gone right there. Uh, does end up falling, and actually the second one also slipping out of his fingers there. So Nurcio uh, eventually cleans up the aggression here in the top left corner. He eventually manages to, or the top right corner rather, he also eventually manages to clean up the one in the main base there, and may very well get rid of the one at his third, but... All things considered, he still ended up losing a ton of units and a ton of economy. And what that means is that the Terran player is going to start moving across the map with an enormous army. Look at all of these upgraded marines. There are siege tanks in his army composition as well. And he is still threatening all of these runbys. He's still going for the constant drops. And this high ground advantage here can be extremely difficult for the Zerg player to deal with. Of course, siege tanks do deal a ton of damage here, in particular to armored units such as those roaches. And while he is scattered planning ahead to try and figure out exactly what is going on, this fight may very well be a really important one in the game. Because you can see right now, the supply counts are practically even. It looks like Nurtio actually may very well be going for a counter-attack here, making sure that he deals the, you know, most damage right there, but he has to sacrifice that fort base because of it. And while the reinforcing units here of Euthermal are going to be able to intercept these running Zerklings just fine, so far Euthermal is looking absolutely spot on, killing a lot of those workers, making sure that he he gets a ton of drones or a ton of SCVs out. And I mean, he's got an even amount of economy to his opponent right now, which is not a situation you ever want to be in as a Zerg. However, all is not over just yet. We do see those Ultralisks on the production tab here. The Hive has been tacked up. Their Adrenal Glance upgrade for the Zerklings is going up as well. But here we go. Massive fight in the middle of the map. A couple of those Siege Tanks do take a whole lot of damage there because of the Corrosive Bio. But I don't think Nurtio wants to fight just yet. He's getting a ton of upgrades here. Making sure that this army that he is building is going to be very, very powerful. But in particular, a couple of minutes from now. Fungal Growth once again going down. He's going to try and slow down this advancing Terran army here to the best of his abilities and while the gold base just now finished up it is definitely going to be under a whole lot of pressure look at these splits already very nicely preemptively splitting to try and get rid of those banelings but he does have to be very careful here because all of these terran units are caught at a very awkward angle and while the siege tanks are shooting away it looks like the terran player is going to be forced to try and pick up and get on out of there he's going to of course do you thermal things and that means that he's going to go straight to the natural here to try and do whatever damage he can and while the gold base here did take a bunch of damage and while there is also some aggression going down on the other end of the map solid defense here by nurture everything considered he just finished up all of the upgrades which definitely make defending and you know also offensive moves much easier to develop at this point but this is still looking very tricky once again beautiful fungal growth there beautiful corrosive bio follow-up and it shuts down those drops in a heartbeat. Now, it may look very easy, but actually hitting that fungal and going for the corrosive bio as a follow up is surprisingly difficult, as oftentimes you are going to have to try and land it perfectly and already guesstimate whether or not it's going to happen in the first place so you don't, you know, misuse your corrosive bios and oftentimes you don't end up catching any of them. So, very, very nice shutdown so far here by Nurcio, and he's making sure that he gets himself a very, very nice, like, for the first time in his game, really, like in a sort of like a supply lead. He may have had one very, very early on, but 
Right now, though, this is definitely not game over for either of these players just yet. Of course, in the meantime, Liquid U Thermal uh, pushing straight forward here with the uh, with the command center. Very aggressive move there, but he just took out a significant portion there of the Zerg's forces, which means that this base is going to be in a primary position here, and this is going to be able to defend against all kinds of aggression with relative ease. But usually, getting that planetary fortress morphed in can be a very very tricky thing to do. And of course, the reason why U Thermal can do that. That is because of all of these relentless drops. He's once again on the other side of the map. And really what this does, it, it forces all of the Zerg units to sort of stay at home. He's not going to be able to really move across the map very easily. And that means that a Terran player at this point is going to be very happy. Because, well, I mean, look at this. This fortress here is going to be very, very tricky to break into. Now, in the meantime, Nurture did go for the Spire. He's getting some of his Corruptors now as well. Going up to the plus three Carapace upgrade as well. So all of his units will be extremely tanky. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for like a Brute Lord switch here in just a little bit. Of course, drop still going down, still taking out Queens, still taking out a whole lot of those units. And while the Medivac is running dangerously low here, um, this Tyrant army though is starting to look extremely terrifying as once again, Euthermal has picked himself up a very, very nice supply advantage. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to try and move onwards once again. Beautiful scan here, trying to... Clear out at least a little bit of the creep before the Terran uh, forces start engaging onwards here. Scanning constantly to try and figure out if there are any Barrowed Bane links, which Nurtio is known to do. But it looks like in this particular match, that is not going to be the case. Corruptors do pick up a full Medivac there, which is a very big deal. As about, you know, a roughly 10 suppliers or so gets lost whenever that happens. But here we go once again. The pressure at that gold base will go down very quickly. And this time around, there are significantly more siege tanks than last time. Look at this army. All of these Ultralisks are very, very good, but of course they will take a ton of damage from those siege tanks as they do do bonus damage against Armored. And while they are clumped up and corrosive, Biles just like that will be able to take out three at once. Beautiful spotting here. I highly doubt there really is enough army here to defend against this base. Of course, Euthermal does have to commit here on creep if he wants to go ahead and try and take out this base. But here we go. All of these Zerg units are in a very awkward angle as they can't really easily engage. They're gonna need like Zerglings or something to go for the surround. And there we go. All of these Zerg units are advancing onwards with so many Corruptors in the air. This is going to be an insane fight as this could be very tricky as Terran could use all of their long term units here. With that fungal growth going down and the shutting down of a significant amount of those forces, it looked for a second like Nurture was going to be able to take that. But with the reinforcing Terran army, look at this. Once more, he is going to try and continue the pressure up to that gold base location. And while a ton of workers once more indeed do end up falling, I wouldn't be surprised if this gold base will be under a ton of pressure as well And indeed, I do think it is gonna end up falling here Beautiful push there by Euthermal But here's the question He ended up losing so many of those Metavacs And the Metavacs are the one unit that you do not want to lose as a Terran player Those are the ones that can carry you throughout the later stages of the game And right now, he wants to start rebuilding them again But that means less Liberators, less Vikings For the potential Brute Lord switch And indeed, that Greater Spire did just end up finishing and I wouldn't be surprised if Nurture will be morphing in those sweet, sweet Brute Lords here in just a little bit. But let's not talk about that achievement just now like it wasn't anything, though. He definitely evened up the score there once again. And Euthermal, once more, uh, is ahead right now in supply. He's going to try and push onwards with this aggression. And he's going to try and simply clean out as much of this creep as possible before moving his siege tanks over. Look at that. Super, like, slow pushing, right? It's really well done because it does a lot of damage. One of the uh, Brute Lords actually ends up falling there before even really getting a whole lot in but there we do have them they are going to be able to be uh, doing a ton of damage to this Terran army, mostly because the siege tanks will try and shoot at the brute links that will be thrown forward, at which point usually they will start shooting at their own marines as well, and the splash damage can hurt a ton. In the meantime though, the main base of the Terran player is practically mine dry, it's actually fully mine dry at this point, and he's gonna go ahead and start mining from the gold now as well, and I mean, while Nurture definitely likes playing this way, right? He likes playing super defensive, this is super difficult for him to try and get up and running, because slowly, while this game is moving forward, right, Euthermal is gathering a ton of resources, and with this planetary here in the middle stages of the map, he can't really find himself an easy opener. 
Also, of course, we do see those sensor towers in perfect positions, making it very difficult here for the Zerg to continue onwards. Another uh, base does not end up getting cancelled. It does indeed get those killed by those Marine Marauder units. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed here by Euthermal's advancements. He's moving onwards very, very nicely, and he's dealing a ton of damage to his opponent. Looking for a base here that isn't even up, which definitely means that these queens are gonna have to pay for this harassment here uh, with their lives. And this is looking pretty insane. And of course, these Corruptors, once again, are gonna try and do whatever damage they can. The Ultralisk also moving onwards. And it looks like Nurcio has decided that he's just gonna give up on this gold base. Uh, still some micro here to the mineral patches. Very, very nicely done. But in the meantime, Nurcio is taking this base here in the middle stages of the map. And look at that. Your thermal moving onwards here, making sure that he gets the missile turrets up right now with the access resources that he gets from this gold base. And he's making sure that he can, first and foremost, of course, spot any kind of incoming aggression here uh, from the Zerg player, but also uh, not have to worry about Burrowed Banelings. And of course, they are surprisingly good against Brute Lords. And indeed, that base in the center part of the map does get cancelled once more. The constant scanning here. Keeping track here of these Zerg units, knowing exactly where they are positioned. And this is looking extremely solid here for the Terran player, just closing in on that maxed out army. But you gotta keep in mind, this army here from Zerg, while it is much smaller in supply, it is also much better upgraded. These are a wide variety of units. These units can take out pretty much any army here in the game. And of course, these are mostly tier 1 units, the tier 1 marines, up against the maximum power here of the Zerg. And this is definitely not game over here uh, for Nurtio just yet. He is a roughly, uh, a roughly like 40, 50-ish supply behind in this game. Uh, in particular, when it comes to the army supplies, though, that is what counts. And, I mean, Nurtio has got a very, very nice army here. And it's definitely looking like he is trying to actually take an engagement here. I mean, once more, he's trying to take out the gold base here. And, of course, the Terran player doesn't really want to move on creep all too far. At the very least, not with a significant chunk of his units. But once more, whenever he does these kind of move outs, right, the Terran units are going to be caught off guard here in the middle side of the map and could very well be taking a lot of damage here with properly timed Zerklings and all those kinds of units. Nurtio, though, kind of like low on resources here. He's not mining a whole lot anymore. And, you know, that is something that we do have to keep an eye on here. Of course, this gold base will start running low here in just a bit too. The one in the central part of the map will indeed start running dry here soon as well. And while there is a new uh, base just now being acquired here by the Natural Command Center, it's all the way floating over to this fifth, I guess this would be the 5th or the 6th base location, normally it would be the 5th, but whatever. Uh, he's gonna try and secure himself another base there. Eventually, right, if both of these players keep on trading here, the Zerg efficiency will definitely come out ahead. That is one of the crazy parts here. Of course, he does need this base once again, right, but you gotta keep in mind, Terran is throwing away a ton of these units here throughout this game. And of course, the Zerk is not replacing nearly as many of those beautiful fungal growth there. Once again, a significant chunk of the Terran supply being thrown away. While it doesn't matter at this point, we do have to keep in mind that there is a chance that actually this comment or this hatchery may very well end up falling once again. Crazy move there. But you gotta keep in mind that Terran is throwing away a lot of resources to try and just, you know, deal with these bases. Definitely throwing away a lot more than it costs to produce those as well. But hold that thought because these Vikings are advancing onwards. They're trying to target fire down all of the Brute Lords. But the Corruptors, in the meantime, are taking out a lot of these Vikings. And I wonder if that was a correct move. Because right now, these siege tanks are indeed forced to be uh, unseized. As they will be taking all of the might of the Zerg right now. And it looks like... Finally, for the first in a very long time, Nurcio is pushing back all of these Zerg units, trying to do whatever damage he can to try and get rid of, you know, all of these Terran units that have indeed settled in the central part of the map. And once more, he is trying to take himself that gold base expansion. In the meantime, Zerglings also running towards the Terran's gold base. And with some crazy moves there by um, Nurcio, I mean, after these Vikings ended up taking a significant amount of damage, he does indeed end up killing this base once again, by the way. But while the Vikings ended up doing a significant amount of damage, this is all of a sudden looking like anyone's game once again. I mean, you thermal lost about a good 30 supply worth of Vikings, and while he did snipe some of the Brute Lords, I feel like that wasn't really worth it, as for the first time in a very long time, once more, Nurcio can do Nurcio things and be annoying. He's done all of his defensive play here for the majority of this one, and 
This means that the Zerg is indeed going to be capable of moving onwards slowly but surely. Gold base is being acquired here. He's also going to go and try and get the central part of the map in his positioning right now as well. And we don't really see any kind of tech switches here from Euthermal. Still having all of those siege tanks, still having a lot of, you know, bio units here as well. But slowly... Here, the Zerg army is starting to look very, very menacing. I mean, look at this. Once more, the Zerglings are running by, trying to shut down as much of this aggression as possible. And while there is indeed a cute little burrowed Zergling there, and while the scan goes down and reveals that that base is indeed not up and still won't be up for a little while, this is still looking like a game that Nerd Show could potentially take. He will need to hit extremely well and properly timed fungals here. But I'm a little worried here for Terran because these bases will start running dry in just a couple of minutes. And if he keeps on throwing away units like he has been doing here for a while, the cost efficiency here of the Zerg army will definitely come out ahead. I mean, all of these Ultras have been alive for a very long time and they've been doing a significant amount of damage. All of them actually have a uh, quite a uh, quite a nice amount of kills. But of course, once more, the Terran player is on the prowl. He's trying to see if he could snipe the base. Looks like uh, Nurtio has just simply given up on trying to get this one here in the first place. And while a couple of units will get sniped and a couple of those drones will have to pay for this with their lives, slowly but surely, Nurtio is establishing himself a solid economy once again. And look at that. He wasn't really mining anymore just a little while ago. Here we do see an Ultralist die, by the way. Look at that carcass of the Zerg there. A lot of units do have to pay for this, though, by killing that one unit. And actually, a second Ultra ends up falling there as well. Solid efficiency there as well, actually, by uh, Bayou Thermal. Getting the most out of that small army there and actually trading very efficiently there eventually. I didn't think they would get a single Ultra kill and then they ended up getting two, which is super nice. But still, like, these Terran units are caught in an awkward angle. There's not a whole lot of splash damage anymore in this army available and while there are a few oh, okay never mind I was gonna say I wonder where the siege tanks went but while there are a couple here defending the central part of the map it looks like this gold base is what it's all about at this point in time of course there is still another base mining here as well so all is not lost here for either of these players just yet but for the first time in a while the Zerk is on the prowl and he's brought the significant portion here of his army to try and deal damage to all of these Terran units and indeed the Zerk is gonna once again force these siege tanks to to un -siege. He's gonna be able to pick up a lot of kills here at that command center here that was landed at the gold and at this point it's practically mined out as well. Of course, in the meantime, Nurcio defending against the drop here from Euthermal, trying to get the most out of the aggression, but the Brute Lords and the Ultralisk army seems extremely powerful as right now the Euthermal player, like Euthermal really doesn't have a whole lot to try and deal with all of those units and we are in an awkward state here because indeed the central base will be trying to get taken here by you thermal he wants to try and start mining here from those juicy mineral patches but that is going to be a very difficult feat as indeed those ultras and the brute lords are once again advancing Look at the amount of units, though. There are so many of them right now. Of course, uh, he does need to be careful. Don't want to leave all of these units just alone because Marines can indeed snipe them down with relative ease. But there are a ton of Brute Lords now. There's seven with one more joining in. And I wonder if just a Marine-based army will be enough. Dropships once again trying to head towards the gold-based location, but the gold is already running low. And Nurcio definitely showing the efficiency here of a late-game Zerg army, sniping a ton of those Terran units. And while they will be able to continue their damage, I wonder, once we eventually do hit a one-on-one -on -one engagement between the max out armies, or at least like the big, big armies here, I wonder if there is going to be enough Terran, because this is an extremely siege tank heavy force, and there's not a whole lot to deal with those Brute Lords. They're once again on the prowl, they're trying to do whatever damage they can, and I think there are more than enough Brute Lords here to deal with all of those Marines alone already, in particular with the siege tanks shelling away at their own units. This is going to be a very difficult one, because the Zerg is advancing onwards. Look at all all of those units getting those all up and running once again a beautiful fungal locking down all of those siege tanks as well and each and every one of them will have to fall and while Nurcio, Nurcio was 50 supply behind at certain moments during this game eventually he ends up picking up the game because you thermal while doing a lot of pressure and while managing to you know keep the zerg player contained he was not able to close out that game and Nurcio just showing his defensive capabilities eventually with a super high tier Zerg army overpowers his opponent. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this game. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. And while you're at it, also make sure you subscribe so you get a notification as soon as I upload more casts. While you're at it, you can, of course, also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are down below in the description. And other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, all right? And I will see you in the next one.